Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles. My name is Carlos Casanova. We're here in Las Vegas for the Gartner Data Center Conference. I'm here with my co-host Charlie Betts. Carlos. And Tracy Reagan from uh, OpenMake. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So Tracy, uh, we understand you've had, you guys have a, a big announcement that you guys just made that uh, you know, sort of transformative for, uh, for your organization. It is, um, and for the industry in, in our opinion. Um, we have a release a product called Release Engineer. Mm -hmm. It fits in the application release automation space of the whole DevOps puzzle. Uh, it really, really fits, if you siloed that puzzle out, we fit into the continuous delivery space. Um, and continuous delivery is really born out of continuous integration. So if you think of how developers acquire software in that continuous integration model, it's very open source focused. Uh, they use products like uh, you know, Maven and Jenkins, and they build out a very nice workflow that can support what they do, and in many, time, in many cases it can support testing. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it struggles with testing, but they, they do their best. So now that continuous integration model is being pushed by this kind of DevOps uh, dream into a, what they call a continuous delivery pipeline. And a continuous delivery pipeline is when you are continuously deploying the application from your testing environment and to production. That is really what the goal is. Uh, but if you think about how production manages and acquires software, and how developers manage and acquire software, there could not be a bigger, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it's completely different. There's right. nothing similar. Right. The data center types are used to buying, I would call it in the legacy buying model, where they go through a proof of concept, they spend six to eight months working on getting budget from the CIO's office. They might go through three or four uh, vendors and, and compare products. By this time, the software development team has already written many, many groovy scripts, you know, any kind of script that they can to try to support those environments. They might even take products like Chef and Puppet and, and make those work to deploy out to production. In the meantime, the data center is still trying to get 100% buy-in. Right. Now, many of the reasons why they have to do that is because the way in which these products are, are implemented, mm -hmm. these ARA solutions, mm -hmm. and most of them are agent-based. Uh, mm -hmm. And when you have something that's agent-based and it's going into your pr production environment, you have a data center of 4,000 in targets, you have to get buy-in to make sure everybody's going to agree to use that tool that's going to be able to have an endpoint. Right. We saw that when we wrote uh, Release Engineer, and it's agentless. So it, it, it eliminates that barrier. Mm -hmm. But the barrier for the, the, that legacy selling was still there. So we went through you know, a sort of a come to Jesus moment over the last year and said, how is it that we can uh, really allow development teams and data center teams to really shake hands? And one of that, uh, the biggest problem really, is in the way they buy, they buy software. We had to make that connection. So in, as of March 2017, Release Engineer will have an open source uh, version. It will be hosted out on uh, uh, GitHub under the FreeBSD license. Mm -hmm. It will be fully functional at the application team level. And it's consumption-based licensing, so if the data center chooses to use that, they don't have to have an end target and the, uh, that consumption-based model will be based on an application. And if you're a bank, an application might be the teller application right, right. or the, the, the mortgage lending application. So it, it brings the cost down into a, a model that is more consistent in the way developers acquire software, mm -hmm. and it reduces the risk for the data center to actually start using it. Right. And it gives all the traceability, it gives, it, you know, the, the, the upgraded supported version has everything that you need to manage multiple releases, has traces back to, uh, a, say, a JIRA or a GitHub or a ServiceNow ticket, as, and you can see what endpoint it went out to. And because it's agentless, it can support a Cisco router, it can support a, um, any environment, it can, a Docker container, it can support uh, cloud I I environments because it doesn't have that heavy architecture on the back end. So we feel like it's going to be very disruptive and we'll, we'll get um, a lot of uh, a buzz around it. And once the development team starts seeing that it supports that Jenkins CloudBees mm -hmm. pipeline, they'll mm -hmm. begin embracing that uh, cleaner technology and move away from the scripting so that the right. data centers can actually take it over. Right. I mean, I think that a lot of uh, the audience might be still just starting to look at these kinds of questions. I mean, probably still folks with uh, 
longer cycle deployments, a lot of manual scripting, a lot of manual building of applications documented in you know, Word documents or whatever. Um, I think one thing that m people might question is as well, you know, we're thinking about Chef or Puppet, why do I need something additional to move the application into production? Um, and that's the whole value proposition of ARA. That products. is, you... so and that's a great, it, 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 we get that question. We get two questions. We get that question and if we, they hear, well, Jenkins does deployments. Right. So there's, there's confusion in, t in terms of what technology is actually doing that heavy lifting. Now, when you look at the, the Chef and Puppet and Ansible markets, we actually integrate with Ansible. We're huge fans of Ansible because, again, it's agentless. Mm -hmm. They're managing what I call the IT stack. Mm -hmm. Everything from, you know, WebSphere, what version of database, what version of the Java, Java runtime. Mm -hmm. Application release automation is intended to support the packaging of the application stack. Right. How do you pull your components together? You're going to pull uh, components out of your GitHub repository or out of a Maven repository. You might have database update uh, components. You might even have a testing component that you want to take along and move it out to a testing environment. That's the packaging features of ARA. And if you have a good <coughs> ARA solution, it has really strong features around the packaging because it's in that packaging ability is where you can get the trace back. Mm -hmm. So you can pull the GitHub uh, ticket or, or a subversion commit number and pull that information as part of the packaging and then version that package so when it goes out to that endpoint, it see, you can understand what version of the package that you have and what versions are in the package. We call them mm -hmm. component versions or component items have versions. Right, mm -hmm. and that, that's what I was thinking when you're describing that. It's, it's the collective movement of that because only when they're pieced together in that particular formation does it make a, a solid unit. Exactly. You know, a different unit with just one slight variation, whether it's security or whatnot, is a whole different entity that might have a vulnerability, it might not have vulnerability. So, so that's, that's interesting, you know, the packaging, if you can move that, and with the traceability is, is obviously key. And the tools like yeah. Chef and Puppet, they use an RPM, a Red Hat, Red Hat package ma uh, management object. So in that RPM has all of the uh, components and the activities that need to be done, and all of that stuff gets hidden then. It's, a, it's been a useful way to manage uh, uh, the packaging of an application, but it's more useful if you're a consumer of Oracle and you want the RPM to install Oracle than it is if you are a bank and you're writing a Teller you're application. Right, right, you don't want to write an RPM for your Teller application you because you have a lot of moving yeah. components that you want to slide in and out and iteratively deploy. Right, right, that makes a lot of sense. You're, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it, they are heavily reliant on the internal package manager, yes. whatever platform it is yes. you're, you're running on. They, they kind of assume that that's, that's the, the basis for the software to get laid down. And yeah. some really or unsung else. hero is writing yeah. that yeah. RPM yeah. and keeping track of it. Right. And they're the ones that get called this in the mor wee yeah. hours of the morning. It says it's, it's always broke. Saturday. Right? It's always it's Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Trace, thank you so much for, uh, for coming on with us, giving us some great information. Um, looking forward to, you know, I think you said March was... Uh, March, when, March 2017. So wish you the best with that. And thank we'll be, you. Uh, you know, if we're here next year, we'll be uh, bringing you on to see how we'll that... We'll be that talking whole, about it. Right, great, mm -hmm. thank you so much.